Praying Mantis vs. Scorpion Who is the strongest predator of the insect world? The battle between two formidable creatures from the animal kingdom, the Praying Mantis and the Scorpion, serves as a captivating and intriguing subject for exploration. These two insects, each with its own unique adaptations and survival strategies, embody the complex interplay of predator and prey in the natural world. The mantis is a big insect of the Mantodia order. It is known as a praying mantis because it frequently stands in a praying posture. Praying mantises come in a variety of forms. They are frequently named after different parts of the world, but many species can be found worldwide. Scorpions, like spiders, are members of the arachnid family of invertebrates. They are distinguished by a pair of pincer-like claws and a curving tail that is frequently ended with a deadly sting. Except for Antarctica, they can be found on every continent and in a wide range of environments. Size and Description The praying mantis, like all insects, has a segmented body with three sections the head, thorax, and abdomen. Adults have wings that cover their abdomen. They have four legs towards the abdomen and two bigger forelegs that seem more like arms. The triangular form of their skull contains their huge, complex eyes. A praying mantis's head can turn 180 degrees and pivot, giving it a wide range of vision. They also have antennae, that they utilize to sniff. The praying mantis, like all mantids, is sexually dimorphic, with females being larger than males. Adults generally range from 2 to 5 inches, 5 to 12 centimeters long. Scorpions have unique physical characteristics. Although most anthropods have an unusual body shape, scorpions have taken it to a whole new level. A scorpion has four pairs of legs, for a total of eight legs, a powerful pair of pincers, and a reasonably large tail with a deadly tip. The stinger is the name given to this point. It has venoms of diverse potency, ranging from those that do not cause much harm to those that may kill an adult human being. The entire body is covered by an extremely strong exoskeleton which gives them mechanical tenacity and strength to deal with prey, while also resisting attacks. They come in a variety of colors. We have them in black, brown, and red. There could also be a color combination. Although they look like crustaceans, they are actually related to mites and ticks. Scorpions vary in size from species to species. The smallest scorpion can grow to be approximately 0.5 inches, 2.5 centimeters long, while the largest can grow to be about 8 inches, 20 centimeters. Range and Habitat The praying mantis can be found in a variety of locations. They are typically found in warmer climates, notably in tropical and subtropical latitudes. The majority of species live in tropical rainforests, while others can be found in deserts, grasslands, and meadowlands. Praying mantises typically arrive in the early to mid-fall, from the end of September to the beginning of October. Females will lay eggs that will hatch in the spring. Newly emerging nymphs will go through several stages until they develop into adults. Scorpions have adapted to temperate, subtropical, and tropical ecosystems such as grasslands, savannas, and forests, in addition to desert habitats. Except for Greenland and Antarctica, they can be found on all major land masses. Their range includes Canada and Central Europe, as well as the most southern points of South America, Tierra del Fuego, and Africa, and they have been accidentally imported into New Zealand and England. Scorpions have been discovered at elevations ranging from sea level to 5,000 meters, more than 16,000 feet, in Europe, North and South America. 
A few species can be found as far north as southern Canada, Germany, and Russia. Food Habits The praying mantis is a carnivorous insect that feeds mostly on other insects such as fruit flies, crickets, beetles, moths, and bees. Larger mantids, on the other hand, are known to eat tiny reptiles, birds, and even small mammals. Mantids employ their camouflage to blend in with their surroundings and wait for their victim to come within striking distance. They then quickly grasp the victim with their raptorial front legs. It then uses its front legs to help position the prey so that it can devour it more easily. Scorpions feed on a variety of prey, including insects, spiders, and even small mice and lizards. Many will stand near their burrow with their pedipalps open and stinger up, waiting for an unsuspecting prey to pass by. Others forage for food, and some even dig pitfall traps on the sand. Scorpions' pedipalps have such sensitive hairs that they can identify and catch an insect in flight. When the prey gets close enough, the pincers grab it and smash it. Most scorpions utilize their poisonous sting only when necessary, since producing more venom requires a lot of body energy. Younger, smaller scorpions may utilize their stinger more frequently than older, larger scorpions. Scorpions do not eat every day like humans, and in arid environments, they have been known to live without food for up to 12 months, as long as they have access to water. The scorpion digests its meal by drenching it with digestive secretions and breaking it up with its jaws. The hard outer body casings are removed and discarded. Behavior the majority of mantis species' reproductive process is characterized by sexual cannibalism, in which the female eats the male after mating. Praying mantids start out life in an Oothica egg mass. An Oothica usually contains many eggs surrounded by a foam of protein, which may then harden into a tough casing for protection. The egg mass is typically laid in the fall on a short branch or twig, and it hatches in the spring to early summer as temperatures rise, signaling the time for birth. The natural lifespan of a praying mantis in the wild is about 10 to 12 months. In colder areas, female mantids will die during the winter. Males typically die suddenly two to three weeks after mating in the fall. This is mainly induced by the female's desire to eliminate the male once the egg sac has been created. A male scorpion may leave his native zone in search of a female scorpion by smelling her scent. Mating rituals differ between species, but if the female is interested, the male initiates a courting dance in which he grasps the female's pedipalps and rotates her in circles, moving her back and forth. In clubbing, the two raise their metasomas over their backs, sometimes brushing them together, sometimes lightly bumping into each other without stinging. This dance might last anywhere from a few minutes to several hours. The male will usually leave after that, since the overly aggressive female may decide he'd make a good snack. Female scorpions, unlike most other invertebrates, give birth to live young, two to 18 months after mating. Now let's find out who would win a fight between a praying mantis and a scorpion. The outcome of battle between a praying mantis and a scorpion is not straightforward and would depend on several factors, including the species of both the mantis and the scorpion, their respective sizes, and the environment in which they are placed. The size and species of both the mantis and the scorpion would be critical. Some species of mantises can be quite large and powerful, while certain scorpion species are also formidable. If the mantis is significantly larger and more robust than the scorpion, it would likely have the advantage in terms of physical strength. Praying mantises are known for their lightning-fast reflexes and predatory skills, 
They are skilled hunters that use their sharp front legs to grab and immobilize prey. On the other hand, scorpions have powerful pincers and a venomous stinger that they use for hunting. The outcome could depend on which predator gets the first strike and how effectively they can incapacitate their opponent. If the scorpion manages to sting the mantis with its venomous stinger, the outcome may favor the scorpion. However, some mantis species have evolved to be resistant to venomous attacks and can fend off or even eat venomous prey. If the fight takes place in an open area, the mantis might have the upper hand with its agility and speed. In contrast, if it occurs in a confined space where the scorpion can use its pincers and stinger effectively, the outcome might favor the scorpion. In nature, these encounters are relatively rare, as praying mantises and scorpions have evolved to occupy different niches and prey on different types of organisms. Mantises typically feed on insects, while scorpions often hunt other arthropods or small vertebrates. Ultimately, the outcome of a battle between a praying mantis and a scorpion would be difficult to predict with certainty, and it would depend on various factors. Nature is full of surprises, and the result might not always align with our expectations. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button.